Hi, and welcome back to Unlock Your Bible, the, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. I'm your Bible teacher, Ron Knight, and, and we welcome you back to our, to our study in the book of Galatians. You know, my friend, the book of Galatians is given by, the, by God through the Apostle Paul to teach you the difference between law and grace. My friend, today God doesn't require religious works for you, by you, to please him, okay? Today what God wants to see you, you do, your heart, in your heart, resting in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as I, as I do it every session, I like to kind of go through how to study your Bible. In the King James Bible, which is the only Bible version that's without error, if you're an English-speaking person, if you don't have a King James Bible, make sure you, you get one. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it tells, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us how to study our Bible. He says, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Therefore, I put on the board how to rightly divide the scriptures. Your Bible is, is, is really simple to understand when you rightly divide it. What, what God did is he separated the Bible in three equal parts. Simply the past, the present, and the future. If you can understand past, present, and future, you can understand your Bible. The books of time past, in the past, are Genesis through the books of Acts. Acts. God is dealing with the nation of Israel. He's dealing with them through the law given by Moses. And then the prophets remind Israel about Moses' law. Then it's the prophetic program in the scriptures. It has to do with God's kingdom of heaven on earth. In Acts, chapter, in Acts chapter 9, God changes the program, raises up the Apostle Paul. In the books that Paul wrote, his 13 books, epistles, letters, are Romans through Philemon. It's, a le it's letters written to the Gentiles, the body of Christ, the nations, even including Israel. And it's grace, it's the grace message, Paul's the apostle. It's called the mystery of Christ, the opposite of prophecy. Prophecy is that which God has made known through, all, through the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Paul says that the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, had been hid in God since the world began. And that has to do with what God is doing in the heavenly places. Our calling as members of the body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ, is in the heavenly places. When God takes us home to be with him in the rapture, he's going to again finish with the nation of Israel. The books of Hebrews through Revelation is God speaking to that nation. It's future from us, okay, the tribulation period. Israel again, God will give them his law. This time he'll write it in the believer in Israel's heart. He gave them the prophets and the apostles to instruct them. It's the prophetic program, and, and he will bring his kingdom of heaven on earth here when Jesus Christ returns to rule as king of Israel. Now, when we're reading the book of Galatians, we're dealing with Pauline truth, the, the apostle Paul, okay? The book of Galatians explains how you're not under the law, you're under grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14 the Apostle Paul says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, you're under grace. The book of Galatians explains why we're not under law but under grace, okay? And when we left off in the last session, um, we left off in the book of John, John chapter 8, if you will. In John chapter 8, the Lord Jesus Christ is dealing with the nation of Israel. And he's dealing with them because the, the Pharisees are Abraham's physical seed. But he was telling them because they don't have the faith of Abraham, they're really not his children. Okay? So in John chapter 8, let's pick up in verse um, 39. John chapter 8, verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. You see, my friend, even back here, if they, they needed to have the faith of Abraham, and in Israel's program, Abraham's faith worked. It believed God, and he did, they would do, he did works. They should have believed God that Jesus Christ was their Messiah, and they would do the work, specifically get water baptized and do the things that the Lord asked them to do, keep his commandments. Okay? Look at verse 41. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If, ye were, if God were your father, 
ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You see that? He's saying that if you're really God's child, you'd believe on me. Now today, my friend, it's the same thing. In order to be a child of God today, you need to have faith in Jesus Christ. You need to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross to pay for your sin. That when he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, as a sacrifice, he did that for your sins. Okay? That he was buried and rose again the third day. By having faith in what Christ did on the cross for you, you're God's children. You're God's child. Okay? Now, go back to the text. Here in, in verse 42... Jesus said unto, unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Verse 43. Even because ye cannot hear my word. The problem with the Pharisees is they didn't have faith. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. In him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, verse 44, my friend, is, is packed with truth. The Lord says that these Pharisees who were of the physical seed of Abraham, they were Israelites. But because they didn't have the faith of Abraham to believe God, and, and in to, to believe God in that day, you would believe on Jesus Christ as Messiah. They were of the father, the devil. They were motivated by Satan. They were ruled by Satan because they were in unbelief. They wouldn't believe God. And he says, and the lust of your father, you will do. You understand what he's saying there, my friend? He told them earlier, you're trying to kill me. Therefore, look what he says in the verse. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. You understand what he's talking about? Now watch this. In the book of Genesis, there were two, two men born. The first man born, Cain. His twin brother came out, Abel. Cain was the first man ever born on earth. Adam was created. Cain was a murderer. And he was motivated by Satan. He was of that wicked one, John says over there in 1 John. Well, it was, it was Satan motivating Cain to kill his brother. And the book of Hebrews says that the reason that he killed his brother is because his works were evil and his brother's works were righteous. You see what religion does? Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. He brought of his own works, his own doings. But his brother Abel brought the, the lamb. He brought a blood sacrifice like God had told him. He did it by faith. God told Adam. Adam told his sons, you must bring a blood offering, a blood sacrifice of a lamb. Abel did it. Cain didn't. And Satan motivated Cain back here in Genesis to murder his brother. That's what the Lord is talking about. Satan was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. And he is telling these Pharisees that they seek to kill him. They're doing the same lust of their father, Satan. And Satan, is, he, later he motivates these Pharisees to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they couldn't physically kill him because of the rules of the Roman Empire. But they enticed and they forced, they, they pressured Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to put him on the cross. But it was the nation of Israel and Rome. It was all the world. The Jew and the Gentile killed the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about in verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. They will kill him. See? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Now watch, watch this. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He didn't say the father of them. He said the father of it. You understand, my friend? There are two programs operation in the universe. There's a lie program from Satan and a truth program from the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're either in one or the other. If you're, if you're in, if, you're, if you've never trusted the, sh the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're part, part of the lie program. Once you're in Christ, you can become a part of the truth program by being in Christ and then learning through the Apostle Paul the truth of Jesus Christ. 
Here, Satan is the father of the lie. Now, here's the lie. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan told Eve and her husband Adam that they didn't have, they could be their own gods. They didn't have to do what God said. They could be their own God knowing good and evil. See, that was the lie that mankind bought into. And what the Lord is saying here to these Pharisees is, you want to be God. You want to be your own God. See, my friend, either you're going to run your life or God will. And if, if God is not running your life, and the only way he can do that is by you putting your faith and trust in the shed blood of his son and by listening to what the Apostle Paul says. That's the only way. If, if, your, if your faith is not in Jesus Christ and Pauline truth, what, what the Apostle Paul wrote, wrote if you're not following those commandments, Paul says that if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are commandments of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If you're not following the Apostle Paul as he follows the Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? You want to be your own God. You want to do it your way. It's not enough, my friend, to be scriptural. It's not enough that you go back here to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or go to Hebrews through Revelation, and be biblical and scriptural. That's not enough. You need to be dispensational in your study of the Bible. And the Apostle Paul, he's the one who instructs you today. Okay? So, they bought the lie. They were going to be their own God. Okay? Now, why is this important? Because just being the physical seed of Abraham back in time past wasn't the issue. You had to have the faith of Abraham. Well, that brings us back to our study in the book of Galatians chapter 3. Go back there. The same thing that the Lord told these Pharisees, the Apostle Paul told the believers in, in his day, the, the believers in the body of Christ. We left off, my friend, in, in chapter 3, verse 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. In order to be Abraham's child, the Lord Jesus Christ told them, that you were Abraham's child if you did the works of Abraham, which they didn't. Today, in order to be Abraham's child, it's not of works. See, I took you to that passage to show you. There in that program for Israel, they had to do the works of Abraham. Today, under grace, all you have to do is have the faith of Abraham. Just believe God. Okay? Now, faith is the only way to please God. Okay? We saw that. Romans 4, verse 5. Now to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I want to show you the difference. I'm going to show you the importance of right division. Go with me to the book of James. Go to James chapter 2. We're going to quickly look at James so I can show you that there is a difference in how you study your Bible. Now I said in the last session that as I dealt with people over the years about faith, about the grace message, they no doubt come to this passage in James chapter 2. Now, James is a book written. It's, in the, it's between Hebrews and through Revelation, so it's a future book written to the nation of Israel. James chapter 1, verse 1. And when you see what James has to say about Abraham's faith, it always has to do with his works, just like the Lord Jesus Christ, James' half-brother, said. He said it. James chapter 2, if you will, look at verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Now, my friend, I really don't have to go past that verse. Because James is saying that in Israel's program in the future, that your faith, just believing what God says in his word, is not enough. See, that's different than what Paul says, isn't it? The Apostle Paul says, It's by grace have you been saved through faith, that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. James says, Can your, can your works by themselves save you? No. Now, what type of works were they? Well, you understand there's a day coming when the Antichrist comes on the earth. You understand that Israel, believe in Israel, won't take the mark of the beast. They won't be able to buy or sell. They won't have food and raiment. So what happens is, is God, is, is this program is going on, those who have will, will help their brethren. You remember the Lord it was on uh, earth? And he says, let he who has two coats give to him who has none, right? He would tell them to share all of their goods with their fellow Israelites. By the way, in this program, you were to sell all that you have and give, right? Lay it at the apostles' feet. That's the program. Well, James is about to say the same thing. Look at verse 15. 
If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Now my friend, can you get more clear than that? Can James say it any more clear than that? That if your faith did not have works to accompany it, it was dead, useless, empty. The exact opposite to what the Apostle Paul says. Look at chapter Romans chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. What James says here is the exact opposite. Different program. If you don't rightly divide the word of truth and make the distinctions in the scriptures as God does, you'll confuse yourself. James says that your faith without works is dead. Paul says all God will accept is faith without works. Okay? Different program. Look at verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? I mean, he's, he keeps saying it, didn't he? He says it again, third time. Now, he's going to use Abraham, their father, as the example, the same way Paul did in Romans 4. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? You see, my friend, when James speaks about it, he goes to Genesis chapter 22, when Abraham offers Isaac, but when Paul speaks about Abraham, he goes before that back to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. James used an incident where, where Abraham showed his faith by works, a, a, a picture of the prophetic program. The Apostle Paul uses an incident where Abraham shows his faith without works, just believing God. Both Abraham, I mean both Paul and James use Abraham, their father, as an example of faith. Paul uses him as an example of faith without works. James uses him as an example of faith plus works. Both of them are right. James and Paul don't contradict. James, uh, James has a ministry to the nation of Israel in the prophetic program. Paul has a ministry operating today in grace. And that's why you need to rightly divide the scriptures. Now go back to Galatians chapter 3, if you will, as we move forward in, the, in, the, in that epistle. In Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 8. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. You see, my friend, when, when Paul says that the scriptures foresee you know, my friend, when you deal with the Holy Bible, you're dealing with God himself. Paul uses the term, the scripture and God interchangeably. He would say, and God said, he'll say, and the scripture said. You know, my friend, in the King James Bible, in your language, it's the perfect word of God. When you read this book, it reads you back. When you're dealing with the perfect word of God, you're dealing with Him, God himself. And because God has omniscience he can, he's all knowing he can see the future by the way what makes the Bible the most special book in the universe is that it tells the future see the Bible is the holiest book on planet earth it's the only holy book it's different from all other holy books because it's the only one that tells the future before it happened it's called prophecy now God tells the future and look what he says here the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. When God dealt with Abraham in Genesis 12, he knew in his mind, God knew in his mind, that one, someday he would justify the heathen, what did he say? Through faith. Now the heathen. The heathen are pagans. It was the other races on planet earth outside of Israel. We'd call them Gentiles, okay? Those who didn't know God in Israel's day. Now it says that it was through faith. Look at, look at the rest of the verse. It says, So through faith preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. You know, God spoke to Abraham the good news. And the good news was the blessing. God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great in a great nation. And, and in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You know, you know my friend? That promise has come through the shed blood of Lord Jesus Christ. He's the blessing. You know, Israel missed the blessing when they crucified their Messiah. But God in His grace, 
he, he, he created Israel to take the knowledge of the Lord Jesus to the nations, but they rejected him. But that didn't catch God off. He had a mystery program. He says, by through the fall of Israel, salvation has gone to the Gentiles. Okay? Now, let's look at that. Let's look at, at chapter uh, 3, verse 8. It says, for seeing, the scriptures foresaw God preached the gospel before. God told Abraham the good news before. Okay? Now, let's look at that. Go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. When it says that God spoke the good news to Abraham, the gospel to Abraham, that the heathen would be um, justified by, through faith. You know, Abraham was a Gentile, my friend, before he got believed God. Before he got the, 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 the circumcision covenant, he was a Gentile, just like you and me. And God gave him the circumcision covenant as a token of the, of the promised blessing. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 3, look at verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See that? You don't need the deeds of the law to be declared righteous. The word justified means to be declared righteous by God. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Well, the answer is no, right? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. You know, my friend, there was a time where he was just the God of the Jews. The Jews were the only one who had a relationship with God. But since the Apostle Paul, Paul says, hey, he's the God of the Gentiles as well, isn't he? Verse 30, seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Now look what he's saying. The circumcision by faith. Israel's program was one where they had to believe God and then they'd have some works to do. So it was going to be by faith. But with Gentiles, it would be through faith. Through faith means there's no works. The, the, vet, the way, the, the, the instrument by which God would, do, would bless you is by your faith just resting in his word. No works. Okay? That's what he's saying. It's going to be through faith. Go back, to, go back to Galatians chapter 3, if you will. You know what? On the way, let's look at chapter 4. I want to show you something about Abraham as well. Go back to chapter 4. Look at verse 12. It says that Abraham was the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet what? Uncircumcised. You see that, my friend? God imputed righteousness to Abraham before he was ever circumcised. Verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See that? When God gave that promise to Abraham, the law was like 400 years after. I mean, at least 430 years before God gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai, God had imputed righteousness to Abraham by faith. That's why it's futile for you to try to keep the law to perform to please God. When God says, if you can look at Abraham, you can understand how I justify. I justified Abraham by faith with no works. I'm going to justify you through faith and no works. Okay? Abraham was through faith and no works. That's how God is going to do us. Okay? Well, we got about four minutes left. So let's go back to Galatians chapter 3. And let's look at verse 9. It says, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You see, my friend, the book of Galatians, wants, God wants you to know that it's all by faith. You know, my friend, faith is the only thing you can do without doing anything. If God asked you to do something and you didn't do it perfectly, you know what would happen? You'd be cursed. The next thing that we're going to look in the next sessions is about the curse of the law. You know, nobody could keep this law. God in his graciousness allowed Israel to give animal sacrifices because they were sinners. The law just let them know they were sinners. Paul's going to tell us in the book of Galatians that God gave that law as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The law was just given until the faith of Christ would come. And that, that came 2,000 years ago. When Jesus Christ raised up the Apostle Paul, 
and explained that it was through his death at Calvary that God imputes righteousness. Now, the law wasn't the issue, your performance under it, okay? Look at verse uh, 9 again, Galatians 3, verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Um, look at verse 14, if you will. Verse 13, we'll, we'll get to these passages next week. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through, Christ, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Remember what I told you that promise was? It was the promise of the Spirit. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today, God gives you His Holy Spirit. And the only way you can live eternally is to have God's Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit of God is eternal life. And when you get the Holy Spirit of God by faith in Jesus Christ, you'll live forever. You know, if you're a believer today, you're going to live forever. Even if you die physically here, absent from the body, present with the Lord, you'll be with the Lord for eternity, okay? Um, look at verse 29 of Galatians 3. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, my friend, the key today is being in Christ. You know, let me ask you, do you know for sure when you die where you're going to spend eternity? You know, your soul is eternal. And even when your physical body dies, your soul is going to live on forever. There's no ghost today. You know, I know the television says where you can talk to ghosts. Nobody talks to ghosts. Your soul either goes to heaven or hell. And what determines where your soul goes is what you believe right now. Do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin? Well, my friend, if you're a sinner who, who knows he's a sinner, and you believe Christ died on the cross for your sins, your eternal soul will go to heaven. If you don't believe that, there's only one other place, and that's hell. And God doesn't want you to go to hell. He created that for, the, for Satan and his angels. You know, the only way to know for sure where you're going to go to heaven is to believe what the Apostle Paul wrote, that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. It's faith. We've been looking at faith, not works. There's no work in that. Right where you're at, if you're sitting on your couch watching me today, God's Word says that you could be saved right now. All He wants to do is see your heart resting, trusting solely in His Son, the Lord. Once you believe Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And my friend, if you're a believer today, and you're not attending a, a, a Bible study that rightly divides the word of truth, that has time passed but now the ages to come, that, it, that exalts the office of the Apostle Paul. Well, you need to join us. Not just on here. You need to join us in person in fellowship with those of like precious faith. Give me a call. I'm Ron Knight. Here's my number. Call me. At, uh, you can call me there. You can go to the website and unlock your Bible. Call me or go to the website and, and ask me a question. I'll give you free materials on how to study your Bible, okay? But all these things is the issue with God. It, it's who you are in Christ. It's understanding Jesus Christ according to Revelation of Mystery through the Apostle Paul. That's what God wants. He doesn't, he doesn't want your religious works. You can keep them. In fact, don't worry about religion. Put your faith in Christ. So my friend, I'm Ron Knight. And until next time, thank you for joining us for Unlock Your Bible.